God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. And if they don't infiltrate the garden, they can't download their dimensions. The only dimensions you will see in Eden are the same dimensions that are obtainable in Zion. Because Eden would have become an expression of the will of God. The life of God powers it. The presence of God powers it. But by seduction, the devil dragged the man into another form of communion. And that man began to download the nature of that spirit. But with God, his will must come to pass. So there was a way God decided to puncture back into the corrupt world in order to create another design. Because the first time he created the garden, the world was already damaged. It's like entering an ocean with a, a, an air ball or a balloon, so to say, and you are in the balloon. The balloon will float on the water. So long as the water doesn't enter the balloon, you will breathe oxygen until you puncture the balloon. Right? That was what God did when he began creation. Because in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said God created the heavens and the earth. And he stopped. And he said, and the earth was void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, judgment was passed on the earth. Because the first earth had been destroyed. So what God came back to do was to recreate the destroyed earth. And the way to do it was to download heaven into earth. So the, the integrity of what God downloads will be kept. And then from there, God begins to reconstruct the visible realm. He said, let there be light. And Paul told us the light God created didn't come from heaven. He called it out of darkness. He said, let the dry ground appear. He began to recreate the earth that was already destroyed. The same way, after Adam fell, God now had another intention to bring another kind of Eden. To create another possibility that is not corrupt and infiltrated by the old earth. Of course, the one Adam had sabotaged. And the way to do it was to seduce another man to come out of what was in existence. And he said to Abraham, come out from your country. Your country is run by another philosophy. Another spirit is the governor of what you live by. He said, come out of it. Because Abraham was the grandson of Nahor. And Nahor was one of the princes of Nimrod that built the Tower of Babel. They had, they had mastered the visible realm. So there was, no, there was nothing else in the world that appealed to them. They had studied all kinds of wisdom. So they wanted to go to the cloud and find out what exists there. But you can't take corruption into perfection. That which is incorruptible. You can't journey from corruption into that. You can't carry corruption there. It is alien to it. So God came and divided their language. So the way to bring back heaven to earth was to separate somebody from the earth that has already been compromised by the nature of the spirits of this world. He said, come out of your country. Come out of your kindred. Come out of your family to the land that I will show you and then I will bless you. And I said, that calling that God gives to a man is what we call the drawing of a spirit. Every spirit that wants to get your attention will seduce you. Because they know that their language may be alien to you. If you were given to immorality, for example, and we come and say, purity is the way of the kingdom, the first thing you will start thinking is, how is it possible to be pure? And then when somebody talks about purity, you will think, what he's trying to say is that uh, God is helping him. <laughs> because that language is alien to you. In fact, if somebody comes and says, I'm a virgin, either you think the person is lying or you assume the person is not informed. Because the language of where we live now is, is normal to live for the way you want. And when you finish, come back and cry, God will forgive you. And then you, carry, you, you keep on. You don't know that there's another realm. There's a language. So when the spirit comes, he won't begin with language. Because if he begins to talk to you, his standards will be too high. If God comes, for example, and begins to talk from his realm, you can't interact with him. So the first thing the spirit will do is that he will go back to the pot, the potters in your soul that the devil has have taken over. And he will begin to seduce you. You are somebody that likes elegance. He will show you elegance in the kingdom. You are somebody that likes to rap. Or you like to show your chef. 
the moment you come into the kingdom after one week they say come to the altar lead the okay i can lead some so you now start coming because you want to sing because you like to show yourself <laughs> the spirit is trying to seduce you meanwhile when he's done seducing you he may now send you to become an intercessor so you will not appear on the altar again so he's <laughs> what the spirit will do is to is to seduce you he knows the things that the devil have perverted in your life he will go back to those gates and bring superior wisdom and as he begins to do that something in your life will your spirit will come alive and then you begin to approach that spirit as he draws you why he's drawing you is because he wants to separate you from this civilization so that you can come into another economy where he can equip you sufficiently to go back to the civilization that corrupts you and establish an ark that can save another generation but you can't build the ark because the patterns the dimensions of the ark are not on earth human intelligence and architecture cannot create that ark the dimensions of the ark are in the heavens but for you to be equipped to build that ark the spirit will seduce you back to zion and that the, those years of seduction may be long because sometimes distraction will hold you to one spot and the spirit will battle with distraction for one year and when it's done with distraction seduction will hold you down for another five years but the spirit is not in a hurry because where he lives there's no time it's called the ancient of days if you refuse to cooperate with the spirit you are the one wasting if that spirit decides that what he wants to do is with the kusi generation you who didn't submit will be out but what that spirit wants to achieve will happen because it's functioning from above time you are functioning within time so even if you fail somebody else will come with your dna another one will come with your dna as far as the spirit is concerned he is dealing with kusi because kusi is not a man he's a people the day the spirit is able to seduce you that day your journey into participating with the divine is activated and then the spirit shows you a dimension because when you enter into god you discover there are many dimensions the angelic realm reveals to us the multifaceted dimensions of god so when michael shows up you see the strength of god and if you see michael you think god is all about power until gabriel shows up and then when gabriel talks he uncovers mysteries that were locked for many generations and then you now discover there's a dimension called wisdom and there are many of such dimensions there are angels that appear as light there are those that appear as as flames of fire all of these things are locked there when you come the spirit opens his oracles to you and then he tells you your inheritance is this dimension take it and go and build it on earth so that the sons of men can be discipled after this order so when the spirit comes he said his glory will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea so if you come to a nation you now see different tributaries of that spirit so the nation from a a, a high pedestal becomes the, the the display of the possibilities that are locked up in that spirit so if you look upon israel for example it's a a, a display of the multifaceted dimensions of god so when Isaka shows up he begins to to talk about mysteries that only spirits understand he tells you don't go this way tomorrow go like this and then you are saying no the road is here he said no there's no road here you are seeing the road but Isaka is seen from another plane and when you wake up in the morning a log of wood have blocked this road so if you were wise you would have traveled in this direction so when you look at that that is a dimension of that spirit it was an architectural work that a man who entered into god pioneered so the reason the spirit seduces you is to bring you to a place where you can pioneer his ways you can pioneer his life you can pioneer his wisdom so that a generation can be formed after that order that is the first thing the spirit desires of you to be wooed to him because if you receive intelligence from another spirit it will become corruption and in order to ensure that you will do that thing for a long time the spirit will give you laws those laws are your consecration requirement of perfecting the will of that spirit so sometimes a spirit wants you to become a, a prophet and then it brings you a body for one year he said pray in the night 
Meanwhile, that prayer in the night for one year is so that you can hit a prayer quota of 10,000 hours before you break into the energy level of the prophetic. So your one year can become 10 years because the, the 10 the 10,000 prayer quota you may you may deliver it for one year and you may choose to deliver it for 10 years so every week you wake up you say Kai, oh boy i tired this night oh no easy <laughs> what <laughs> you have increased your wilderness days ah my brother no i'll continue on next week or you now wake up ah you see a pretty lady you now follow her for three weeks after three weeks you go for dinner with her and then you come back after four months you say lord lord i'm sorry and you think you are outsmarting god that you i'm sorry he will forgive you but the problem is that there is ten thousand hour that must be covered <laughs> so if you are wise when you look upon the damsel you now go back to that spirit and say help my eyes <laughs> my eyes these eyes wants to rob me of my destiny and possibility help my eyes and like job you will not look upon the damsel because it is taking the time for you to enter into possibilities that are locked up beyond time there are sacred things that only mortars touch and for you to get there you must be re-engineered and what that spirit wants to achieve is to re-engineer you to a point where when men look upon you you become like the very brightness of the god that is unseen So he burdens you with consecration requirement sometimes you wake up in the morning it's like a scene to eat food it's not a scene to eat in the morning but for you it's a scene because you are joining on a path there's a mystery that is locked up in zion that only your generation should look upon it and many are traveling on that path the spirit will keep seducing you because there are certain things that are calculated into divine calendars and god desires that your generation should look upon it so he begins to seduce you when he discovers that you are walking slow he now say add fasting when he discovers that your movement is slow he say add night prayer sometimes he discovers that your soul is still attached to things he now begins to give you laws he said give out all your money give out your good clothes and you are struggling meanwhile it's because of clothes the other time that you had to take up a job to boost your wardrobe so instead of wasting that time now say give out clothes give out your clothes when you discover every good cloth you have it tells you to give it out you stop laboring to buy <laughs> empowerment doesn't begin with impartation I'm telling you why some of you who are supposed to become voices in Ghana have not yet been heard. The prophet told you five years ago that when you are 22, they will begin to hear you. Now you are 27. <laughs> Instead of you to check your life, you are going back to find out, is this prophet a true prophet? The problem is not with the prophet. The problem is with your dealings. You are violating your consecration requirement. And so long as you violate it, the time will be long. May God help you to keep the demands. So that you don't grow old and your record will be that I gave my life to Christ 40 years ago. 40 years ago doesn't count in Zion. Get thee out of thy country. And I say when men come out, then the spirit gives them a dimension. That is what encounters does. Encounters are to bring you into the dimensions that you are supposed to pioneer as an order. You know, I said something yesterday. I told you that nations are not necessarily countries. And if you study Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, you see it. He said, Get thee out of thy country to the land that I will show you. The word land and the word country are the same. But when he came to nation, he said, I will make of thee. He didn't say, I will make with thee. He didn't say i will make by d he said i will make up because what you see you have become and that thing is what will be pioneered as a nation so what will come out of that everybody that connects to it becomes that which they have seen 
I will make of this. So there are nations in countries. There are dealings of God that are territorial. There are dealings of God that are tied to countries. There is what God wants to do with Ghana as a people. But in Ghana, there are nations. Nations that are consistent to different orders in the spirit. Because if you look at the life of Abraham, many nations came out of Abraham. The Bible spoke of Ruel. Ruel is one of the sons of the Midianite of the of Keturah. They, they became the Midianites. They had also learned the ways of God. So when Moses carried Israel out of Egypt, it was where that began to teach Moses the way of priesthood. It was where that told Moses that in Horeb there is the spirit of Elohim. Because Moses doesn't, you don't graze pasture at the backside of the desert. But the man was a priest. He knew the ways of God. So he told Moses, because the word Ruel means the friend of God. The man is a friend. You know, Genesis 18, 19 says, I know Abraham, my servant. He will command his children in my ways. So everybody, before Abraham gave them gifts and sent them forth, he had taught them the ways of God. And when they left Abraham, they knew the ways of God and they kept his oracles. The reason God worked with Israel because he's the child of promise, not because they were the only ones that knew the ways of God. The same counsel Ruel came and gave to Moses that you overburden yourself. He said, get from among you captains of thousands, of hundreds and of fifty that will help you bear the body. Was the same thing God came and told Moses. The only thing with God's equation was that it was not a mechanical act. It was a spiritual act. So God took his spirit and put upon them. Are we together? So these guys understand priesthood. Balaam is also of the descendant of Abraham. And they know priesthood. It was Balaam that came by an order of priesthood that dwarfed the sight of Moses. If not because God intervened, Balaam would have violated the priesthood of Moses by wisdom. Balaam, <laughs> if you study the scriptures, you'll be amazed what are there, what you will see. If God had not intervened, the things Balaam would have done on the mountain would have compromised Israel. But when he climbed the mountain and he looked at Israel, ah, he knew that there was a wisdom that Moses had downloaded that kept the integrity of Israel. He said, Israel is seated in their tabernacles according to the patterns of the spirit there was a pattern that they they sat according to their tribes so that or that sequence that they sat he made it possible for god to alight among them so he said i hear the sound of a king the voice of a king is among them so the way moses preserved israel was to make sure they sat in an order that could host the glory of god so when balaam went up he knows priesthood so he knows that because the voice of a king is in their midst, it will be hard to deal with them. So he went another way by divination. And he wanted to do something to make them compromise the structure that Moses had set in motion. So even Balaam understood the ways of the spirit. They are all descendants of Abraham. They are different tribes that Abraham formed. God chose Israel and they kept the covenant of righteousness because it's a nation so jesus god deals with nations and that is why he calls men because men pioneer nation to start a country people gather together and agree on a philosophy and on the strength of that philosophy they build a country but when god wants to bet a nation it is by travail countries are are bettered by agreement nations are bettered by travail you journey into the womb of that spirit until you see a dimension. The dimension you bring becomes an order. So in Romans chapter 9 verse 4, he says, who are the Israelites? He didn't talk about their land. They were living in a country, but they are a people. Who are the Israelites? He said, unto whom pertained the glory. These are the things, the articles that Abraham entered into. In his dealings and interaction with God this is what defines the body of people called Israel he say unto whom pertain the covenant the giving of the law the service of God and the promises 
these are spiritual substances that abraham caught in the spirit and every time a man accepts the seduction of a spirit and he catches something there are a people that will be born by reason of that which is called that becomes a nation and i said the greatest honors in zion is to bring us to a point where we are able to keep the things we catch in god until in the in the regeneration these things are wielded to us as inheritances when the devil begins to see this way away from god he's actually robbing you from an eternal investment because the things that are are real they are not in time they are in the spirit that's why the blessings of god are spiritual but when you touch something that is immortal one of the byproducts you see will be in the natural but that thing in the natural is a lie it is momentary it is time based it is given to empower you to fulfill much more of that which is immortal so when god comes he brings a man into himself so the man can find something but there are many people who are pastors and prophets they've not found anything in god paul said what did our father abraham find so when the spirit begins to seduce you he's bringing you to a place where you can find something in god and when you find something in god you pioneer an order that order may not be a system where people are enslaved but that order becomes the identity of a tribe and they begin to do that and it begins to facilitate and fast track the will and the purposes of god so for example you may walk with god and god gives you the ability to sponsor kingdom if you don't understand that god is building nations you will think as good as it is you will think it's about sponsoring things and be recognized so when you give you want the man of god to say it publicly and say brother a gave us 100 million please let's celebrate god for brother a's life and then you are like it's the mercy of god it's the mercy of god <laughs> but a man who understands that god builds nations what he does is the moment he begins to do that he begins to disciple others to do the same and before he leaves this world there will be a generation of people that their burden is to look for kingdom investments is to look for kingdom kingdom needs is to look for kingdom bodies and they sponsor it the more these people do this it becomes a signature in the spirit that will be attributed to that man and for eternity that man will become a dynasty in god this is what god wants to achieve and that's why god seduces men and that's why conferences like this are put together so that people can come and learn the ways of god and as they learn the ways of god they look inward and find out what exactly has god committed to me if god has not committed anything yet it means you are still at the stage of wooing and you will journey from the stage of wooing to the stage of consecration until you enter encounters it's when you enter the realm of encounters that you will receive a matching order for your generation many times our journey doesn't bring us far enough to reach the mountain of encounters and if you have not had an encounter with that spirit it will be hard to have direction in life it will be hard to have conviction over anything your life will float and you will look at what is raining and you will keep joining what is raining until you leave this world you will never have root in the spirit encounters is a place in the spirit that proves that a man have enjoyed sufficient separation from the world system so he's entering into another civilization where he will be told what he will take back into the world system if you study the scriptures you will discover that everybody that made a mark had an encounter of some sort with the spirit of God because it's not a product of intelligence 
your wisdom, your intelligence, your ideology, you picked all of them from the world system. Some of them you picked from the university. Some of them you picked from the families around you. Some of them you picked from the market. You coordinate them together and you call them ideologies. You call them philosophy. But you picked them. The only way you can receive a pure knowledge that have not been corrupt is when that spirit alters it into your spirit man. And when you come down, that encounter becomes the beginning of your journey. You heard our father in the Lord yesterday said the spirit spoke to him for nine seconds. And nine seconds have defined 18 years of his life. That's the power of encounters. Your life has no definition until you've, begin, you've begun to encounter the spirit. The things it tells you will define your life. It will define your essence. It will bring meaning to everything you do. But you have to respond to the wounds, the promptings, the summons of that spirit. You have to keep the demands of consecration of that spirit until you reach the mountain of encounter. It took Moses 40 years. He said for 40 years he was grazing in the wilderness until he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Until he came there. Israel was in captivity. God had altered his voice by prophetic decree that they would be in bondage for 400 years. They had already exceeded 400. God was not moved. If you like, come and say, come on, God, is, God doesn't exist. Was he not him that says 400 years? Has he not passed 400 years? God is a lie. He doesn't change anything. He was not elected. Your whole generation can revolt and reject him. At the end, you'll discover you made the wrong choice. He will still be there and another generation will come somebody else will find him and he will come back and begin what he was doing and your generation that rejected him will be forgotten and then you will discover with this spirit he can't lose so your greatest wisdom is cooperation <laughs> 40 years Moses was moving until he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And God began to tell him, go back to Egypt. You wanted to use your ability and your, your mind. You can't kill all the Egyptians. Even if you were to kill them, you can't kill them. And even if you kill them, what I want to do is not in Egypt. So there were a lot of deficiencies. There were a lot of knowledge gaps. What you will do is that you will go back to Egypt and carry them from Egypt to the land that I will show you. So the thing was not about taking the economy of Egypt. It was not about taking the land of Egypt. I have something in my mind. Your job is to carry them out. Without that encounter, I would not have known. And secondly, this hand they are using to kill Egyptians is, the Egyptians is deficient. How many will you kill? What will I do? What are you carrying in your hand is a rock. Drop it down. And the rod of Moses became the rod of God. And Moses began another order because he had an encounter. Let me give you a list of few persons that had encounters and the deficiencies they were separated from. And then I will tell you three things that will happen to you when you begin to have an encounter. And then we'll trust God for, for something. Abraham's encounter separated him from idolatry. They were a people of darkness. They had priesthood in darkness. That encounter was what separated him from idolatry. Moses' encounter delivered him from the forces of Egypt. You know, the Bible said Moses was terrorized when Pharaoh rose against him. There are many things you can't stand against in Ghana unless you have an encounter. If you think it's about zeal and boldness, when the horrors of the spirit of this land rises, you now discover that your boldness is a function of your soul and your soul will bend. So Moses stood up. I, I will deliver Israel until Pharaoh rules with wrath. Moses ran. He didn't know where his boldness was because it was not born in the spirit. 
Our daddy will tell us that um, anything not born in the spirit will be will be dwarfed when the spiritual thing appears. He ran. So that encounter delivered him from the fear of the forces of Egypt. The Bible said he saw him that was invincible. 